The chromatic polynomial is a polynomial studied in algebraic graph theory, a branch of mathematics. It counts the number of graph colorings as a function of the number of colors and was originally defined by George David Birkhoff to attack the four-color problem. It was generalized to the Tut polynomial by H. Whitney and W. T. Tut, linking it to the Potts model of statistical physics. History if denotes the number of proper colorings at G with K colors then one could establish the four-color theorem by showing for all planar graphs G. Hassler Whitney generalized Birkhoff's polynomial from the planar case to general graphs in 1932. In 1968 Reed asked which polynomials are the chromatic polynomials of some graph, a question that remains open, and introduced the concept of chromatically equivalent graphs. Today, chromatic polynomials are one of the central objects of algebraic graph theory. Definition the chromatic polynomial of a graph G counts the number of its proper vertex colorings. It is commonly denoted, and which we will use from now on. For example, the path graph on three vertices cannot be colored at all with zero or one colors. With two colors, it can be colored in two ways. With three colors, it can be colored in twelve ways. For a graph G with n vertices, the chromatic polynomial is defined as the unique interpolating polynomial of degree at most n through the points if G does not contain any vertex, with a self-loop. Then the chromatic polynomial is a monic polynomial of degree exactly n. In fact for the above example we have, the chromatic polynomial includes at least as much information about the colorability of G as does the chromatic number. Indeed, the chromatic number is the smallest positive integer that is not a root of the chromatic polynomial. Examples Properties for fixed G on N vertices, the chromatic polynomial is in fact a polynomial of degree N. By definition, evaluating the chromatic polynomial in yields the number of K colorings of G for the same hold for K greater than N. The expression yields the number of acyclic orientations of G. The derivative evaluated at 1 equals the chromatic invariant up to sign. If G has N vertices, M edges, and C components, then the coefficients of his zeros. The coefficients of her all non-zero. The coefficient of in is 1. The coefficient of in is. The coefficients of every chromatic polynomial alternate in signs. The absolute values of coefficients of every chromatic polynomial form a log concave sequence. A graph G with n vertices is a tree if and only if chromatic equivalence two graphs are said to be chromatically equivalent if they have the same chromatic polynomial. Isomorphic graphs have the same chromatic polynomial, but non-isomorphic graphs can be chromatically equivalent. For example, all trees on n vertices have the same chromatic polynomial. In particular, is the chromatic polynomial of both the claw graph and the path graph on four vertices. Chromatic uniqueness A graph is chromatically unique if it is determined by its chromatic polynomial up to isomorphism. In other words, G is chromatically unique then would imply that G and H are isomorphic. All cycle graphs are chromatically unique. Chromatic roots A root of a chromatic polynomial called a chromatic root is a value X where chromatic roots have been very well studied, in fact. Birkhoff's original motivation for defining the chromatic polynomial was to show that for planar graphs, for X4, this would have established the four-color theorem. No graph can be zero-colored, so zero is always a chromatic root. Only edgeless graphs can be one-colored, so one is a chromatic root for every graph with at least an edge. On the other hand, except for these two points, no graph can have a chromatic root at her real number smaller than or equal to 32 27 A result of Tut connects the golden ratio with the study of chromatic roots, showing that chromatic roots exist very close to. If is a planar triangulation of a sphere then while the real line thus has large parts that contain no chromatic roots for any graph, 
Every point in the complex plane is arbitrarily close to a chromatic root in the sense that there exists an infinite family of graphs whose chromatic roots are dense in the complex plane. Categorification The chromatic polynomial is categorified by a homology theory closely related to Covan of homology. Algorithms Computational problems associated with the chromatic polynomial include finding the chromatic polynomial of a given graph G, evaluating at a fixed point K for given G. The first problem is more general because if we knew the coefficients of we could evaluate it at any point in polynomial time because the degree is n. The difficulty of the second type of problem depends strongly on the value of k and has been intensively studied in computational complexity. When k is a natural number, this problem is normally viewed as computing the number of k colorings of a given graph. For example, this includes the problem number 3 coloring of counting the number of 3 colorings, a canonical problem in the study of complexity of counting, complete for the counting class hash p. Efficient algorithms for some basic graph classes, closed formulas for the chromatic polynomial are known. For instance this is true for trees and cliques, as listed in the table above. Polynomial time algorithms are known for computing the chromatic polynomial for wider classes of graphs, including chordal graphs and graphs of bounded clique width. The latter class includes co-graphs and graphs of bounded tree width, such as outer planar graphs. Deletion contraction A recursive way of computing the chromatic polynomial is based on edge contraction for a pair of vertices and the graph is obtained by merging the two vertices and removing any edges between them. Then the chromatic polynomial satisfies the recurrence relation where under adjacent vertices and is the graph with the edge removed. Equivalently, if and are not adjacent and is the graph with the edge added. In the first form, the recurrence terminates in a collection of empty graphs. In the second form, it terminates in a collection of complete graphs. These recurrences are also called the fundamental reduction theorem. Tut's curiosity about which other graph properties satisfied such recurrences led him to discover a bivariate generalization of the chromatic polynomial, the Tut polynomial. The expressions give rise to a recursive procedure called the deletion contraction algorithm, which forms the basis of many algorithms for graph coloring. The chromatic polynomial function in the computer algebra system Mathematica uses the second recurrence if the graph is dense, and the first recurrence if the graph is sparse. The worst case running time of either formula satisfies the same recurrence relation as the Fibonacci numbers, so in the worst case, the algorithm runs in time within a polynomial factor of on a graph with n vertices and m edges. The analysis can be improved to within a polynomial factor of the number of spanning trees of the input graph. In practice, branch and bound strategies and graph isomorphism rejection are employed to avoid some recursive calls. The running time depends on the heuristic used to pick the vertex pair. Cube method There is a natural geometric perspective on graph colorings by observing that, as an assignment of natural numbers to each vertex, a graph coloring is a vector in the integer lattice. Since two vertices and being given the same color is equivalent to the th and th coordinate in the coloring vector being equal, each edge can be associated with a hyperplane of the form. The collection of such hyperplanes for a given graph is called its graphic arrangement. The proper colorings of a graph are those lattice points which avoid forbidden hyperplanes. Restricting to a set of colors, the lattice points are contained in the cube. In this context the chromatic polynomial counts the number of lattice points in the cube that avoid the graphic arrangement. Computational complexity The problem of computing the number of three colorings of a given graph is a canonical example of a hash p-complete problem. So the problem of computing the coefficients of the chromatic polynomial is hash p-hard. Similarly, evaluating for given g is hash p-complete. 
on the other hand, for it is easy to compute, so the corresponding problems are polynomial time computable. For integers the problem is hash p dash hard, which is established similar to the case. In fact, it is known that is hash p dash hard for all x except for the three easy points. Thus, from the perspective of hash p dash hardness, the complexity of computing the chromatic polynomial is completely understood. In the expansion the coefficient is always equal to 1, and several other properties of the coefficients are known. This raises the question if some of the coefficients are easy to compute. However, the computational problem of computing R for a fix R in a given graph G is hash p dash hard. No approximation algorithms for computing are known for any x except for the three easy points. At the integer points, the corresponding decision problem of deciding if a given graph can be k-colored is np-hard. Such problems cannot be approximated to any multiplicative factor by a bounded error probabilistic algorithm unless np equals rp, because any multiplicative approximation would distinguish the values 0 and 1. Effectively solving the decision version in bounded error probabilistic polynomial time. In particular, under the same assumption, this rules out the possibility of a fully polynomial time randomized approximation scheme. For other points, more complicated arguments are needed, and the question is the focus of active research. As of 2008 update, it is known that there is no FPRAS for computing for any x greater than 2, unless NP equals RP holds.